So it seems perfectly fitting that it would be here that I announce that I am a candidate for President of the United States of America. And joining me now with a live studio audience ready with questions of their own, Governor Mike Huckabee, candidate now for President of the United States. Governor, great to see you. Thank you, Megan. How great you feeling? To be here. I feel terrific. I'm glad that I was able to finally say I'm going to run for president. I'm a candidate. And uh, it was a remarkable day. Basically today, we had so many people. There were uh, 2,500 people. We had 900 in overflow. That means that it was like one out of every three people who live in hope <laughs> were there. I know you, you said you were relieved when they clapped. It would have been embarrassing if they had, it would have had been that reaction had nobody... when you announced <laughs> that you were running. But you did say in 2012 that you weren't running, and we showed the clip of that. What, yeah. what changed between then and now? This country has changed. I think uh, I came to the conclusion that I was in a better position to make the run. I, I was not ready. Uh, I was ready mentally and emotionally, but I don't think I was ready organizationally and politically. I think I am now. And I think today's announcement reflected what shocked a lot of people of just how ready we were, how detailed our team was, that we're taking this seriously. This is not some vanity project. Mm -hmm. um, I'm planning on taking this all the way to the White House. Now, last time around, you won in Iowa, among other places, mm -hmm. and the evangelicals loved you. This time around, the pundits say you have more competition for the evangelical vote, from Ted Cruz to Marco Rubio, and the questions being raised, can you do as well with the evangelicals, and can you broaden your coalition, which you needed to do the last time? Well, first of all, I think the narrative that the evangelicals were the only support I had is not exactly accurate, because what I had in 2008, and what I think will happen this time, is a coalition, a lot of them, yes, evangelicals, but a lot of people who are working class people who feel that the government of the United States has simply ignored them, left them behind, forgotten them. We had a couple that got to the hall today at 1.45 in the morning. They had driven up from South Louisiana. They arrived at 1.45. We still had crew working, getting things ready. They said, well, you know, the doors don't open until 8 o'clock. Said, we don't want to miss a thing. They stayed in their car in the parking lot. The lady is blind, her husband, and the lady stayed in their car. Needless to say, we moved them to the front seats. But, Megan, that's the kind of support that, that we see. We had a lady call our office today after the announcement. Said, I got $36 in my bank account. I'm sending 10 of it, and I'll send more when I can. Wow. This, this is who is out there. I know you say this is how you're going to put me. the money behind your campaign together, 5 yeah. and 10 and hopefully greater donations from people who support you as opposed to the billionaires who may pick and choose another Republican candidate. Do you have one of those billionaires, too? I hope so. You know, I mean, I'd love to have a bunch of them. And I understand that we've got to have a lot of money to run the campaign. I'm not being coy about that because, yes, you've got to raise a lot of money, an obscene amount of money. Yeah. One of the things that I find so disgusting about the process, it's not about the best ideas. If you have a few sugar daddies who can just write you a big check, you can be a credible candidate, whether you have a stinking idea or not, mm -hmm. as to what you would do and what's wrong with the country and how to fix it. Mm -hmm. But that's the process we have. We all have to live with the same rules, well, and that includes me. Let's talk about how you'll appeal to the conservative base of the Republican Party, because you've got to check that box before you go forward and challenge yeah. Hillary, who I know you believe will be the nominee. Um, some, some of the knocks on you have been that you are not conservative enough and that you're a big government guy. And as governor, when you, you did reduce taxes in some instances, but you also increased the minimum wage, wage, raised gas taxes, sales taxes, some other taxes, and you increased spending and the size of government by hiring more employees. So the Cato Institute says that you are the biggest big government conservative running. Is that true? No, it isn't true. And part of what they do, organizations often, the think tanks, will take a template and they will create sort of their, their template that they will lay over all 50 states. They don't look at the political dynamics. They don't look at the unique constitutional or statutory requirements. An example, state government actually grew only a half a percent, half of one percent per year during ten and a half years that I was governor in the most democratic state in America. Megan, I didn't have a Republican legislature that walked in every day saying, Governor, what would you like for us to do to make you look good? It's a miracle you got elected. It's a miracle I got elected, even <laughs> a greater miracle I got reelected. And the greatest miracle of all was that I never got less than 90 percent of my legislative package passed against all the headwinds. That's unbelievable because you were the, only the third Republican governor elected since Reconstruction in yeah. the state of Arkansas. It's not like this was a, a, a red state. Uh, and yet you got to the top of it. But now, 
Uh, you explain to me what, whether, because some of the folks say, well, you know, he, he's this big government guy and he's not going to appeal to the Republican base because of things like his position on illegal immigration. Back in 2006, I think it was, you supported a path to citizenship and said locking up or deporting 12 million people isn't going to happen. You stand by that? What we need to do is fix the border. Look, I think everybody basically agrees that the problem is not a problem that people want to come to America. I don't blame people for wanting to come to America. I said today in my speech, I get on my knees every night. I thank God people are trying to break into America, not trying to break out of America. But we've got to have control of the border, which we don't. That's not so much a problem of people who want to come here. That's a problem of our government not doing its job. So secure the borders first. Absolutely. On the size of government, you, you said in 2008, I'm not a Republican because I grew up rich. And as our piece documented, you did not. Yeah. You, you said, I'm a Republican because I didn't want to spend the rest of my life poor, yeah. waiting for the government to rescue me. Explain that. Poverty is an industry in America. There are a lot of people who are poor in America who are poor because the government traps them. This nonsense that people are poor because they want to be, that's not true. People aren't poor because they like to be poor. They're poor because they don't feel like they got a chance. And every time they try to reach for the next rung on the ladder, it is the boot of government that often comes right crashing against their head. Because the programs penalize people for wanting to work harder. I told the story of a guy I met in New Hampshire. He started working a double shift. And he thought, okay, I work 16 hours a day rather than eight. I want to help my daughter through grad school. He'll make twice the money, right? Wrong. Because working a double shift means he made so much money in the double shift that now he's in a new tax bracket and the government got more of what he made in the second shift than he did. Last question before we go to our panel. You say you've had experience running against the Clinton machine. Now, yes. technically, they were out of Arkansas by the time you took the governor's mansion. But how do you think, what do you mean by that? And how is that going to be an advantage to you if you become the Well, nominee? when people say they were gone, let me tell you something. Bill Clinton was governor for 12 years. That means a 1,000 people a year he appointed to office. When I came into the office, first of lieutenant governor, then of governor, every agency was populated with the people he had hired and appointed. They didn't give you a warm and fuzzy welcome? Oh, no. <laughs> it, I got a, my door was nailed shut as that, lieutenant governor. That is actually nailed, true. That, that, it was that, literally nailed shut you for, couldn't 59, get into your own office. for 59 days. It wasn't like they did it and said, oh, we're just kidding. For 59 days, when I finally got in the office, all the office furniture had been stripped, couldn't get letterhead printed. <laughs> it was not. You're lucky they didn't take it. Uh, I was lucky I lived to tell about it. I mean, I would get on an elevator and people would get off. It was brutal, but I it learned much, how to I, It was a much softer departure from the Fox News Channel. I think you can attest to that. Yeah, nobody uh, threw anything at me. It was a wonderful <laughs> departure, and I still love the people here. All right, listen, uh, I've asked you some tough questions, okay. and my, my panel's going to ask, ask you some really tough questions. I may have to leave before that. that I'm way. not sure if I can <laughs> he's, he's experienced it standing in front of a studio audience, and you will see that happen in a moment. It's only a day in for Governor Huckabee, but up next we will put him to the test as our panel of voters, real live Republican voters, get to grill him on his potential plans for this country. Plus, you can join in, too, by going to Facebook.com slash The Kelly File right now. Look Look for the governor's announcement video, leave a question in the comments, and someone will get a chance to challenge the man who would like to be our next president right after this break. Thank you.